everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about my favorite products from brands that I like, my least favorite brands, like brands that I'm genuinely like not interested in. I did do a video similar to this one but like the opposite, like my least favorite products from my most favorite brands. That video will be linked down in the description box, if I remember I'll put it up here in the cards as well, but this is going to be the opposite because I did get a couple of comments asking me if I could do it like the old switcheroo. And if you have not been here before, hello, my name is Angie. I'm such a lover of beauty makeup. I love everything beauty makeup related. I love experimenting with color, playing with new textures and techniques and brands. I love finding new brands. And sometimes some brands just don't excite me. But if you want to see some more makeup content, don't forget to subscribe because I upload five videos a week. I'm feeling a little bit rusty because this is actually the first day that I'm filming after getting back from my two week honeymoon. So if you're thinking like that I'm acting a bit weird, I, I think I am. I forgot how to film, like I forgot how to YouTube. How do you YouTube? <laughs> I did film this look like a little get ready with me, trying some new makeup. It did turn out more, I don't know what I thought. I picked up a neutral palette. I was using this one, the Huda Beauty Jaguar palette and all of a sudden it turned into a neutral look. It is what it is. Usually I do play with a little bit more color, but I don't know, maybe I've been enjoying both neutrals and colors lately. So this is gonna be me talking about, I'm gonna talk about my five, like five brands that I own things that I quite like, but I just don't like the vibe of the brand overall. Maybe I don't like the aesthetic of the brand, maybe the things that they are releasing are not really enticing me enough to want to, for me to want to purchase them, or maybe I, with some of these brands, I've tried quite a lot of things and just haven't been I just haven't been that impressed and therefore I stopped buying from them. Let's start with the most obvious one. I literally, I don't even know how many things I still own from Makeup Revolution. Makeup Revolution is not one of my favorite brands and I have tried in 20, was that 2020? I'm pretty sure 2020, I said that Makeup Revolution was one of the brands that I wanted to try more from because I've tried quite a lot of Makeup Revolution before, like 2016, 17 something like that, and I wasn't really the biggest fan, so I stopped buying from them, but I wanted to give them another chance in 2020. Like, what has changed during these past years? And I'm gonna be honest, not much. <laughs> not much. Makeup Revolution releases so many things, more things than Colourpop. Like, they are the brand that I know of that releases the most things. And most of it that I have tried, and I have tried quite a lot of the brand, is just mediocre. It's mediocre. I will say though, one thing that they do really good is baked like cheek products. Like the baked blushes, the baked highlighters and the baked bronzers that I've tried from them, I have really not only liked but loved. And maybe also like non-baked, but especially baked cheek products, they do that really good. So good that I've actually used up one of their bronzers. I don't know if it's still available. I do think it is. And I've also had quite a few of their highlighters. I feel like I have a highlighter somewhere, I don't know. But the thing is that with Makeup Revolution, why I'm not purchasing from them anymore or why they're my least favorite brand is that when I buy, when I make an order from Makeup Revolution and I buy like 15 things, I only end up liking one and thinking like two are mediocre and the rest I'm like decluttering. So for me, it is a waste of time, money and effort to try and find that one thing that I think is good. I personally like, I I applaud them for being an affordable, accessible brand that has a lot of options. And they're usually also pretty diverse when it comes to like the shade ranges of the things that they're offering. I love that about them, but I do wish that they would reel it in a bit and focus a little bit more on the quality because I feel like they are definitely quantity over quality and I would prefer them to release less and just put more effort into the things that they're releasing because I think that a lot of the things that they're releasing, this is my personal personal opinion, I know some people disagree, but I think most of the things that they're releasing are mediocre. If they had just worked a little bit more on them, both like outside and inside, I think that they could have been better, but they do do the baked cheek products really good. So if you wanted to try the brand, I would say bronzer, blush, highlighter is something that I do recommend from them. Um, a lot of the other things, not so much. Another brand that I would say is one of my least favorite brands and not necessarily because of the products. Well, of course, because of the products, but because of the, the, the way the brand is set up is Too Faced. They are just not appealing to me, but I also don't think that I am the audience. They're either too 
cutesy cutesy hearts and bears and hugs and I do love me some hugs but <laughs> sometimes it's just too much of that cutesy cutesy and I'm not that person I I can get very drawn to quirky or nerdy or like very childish things childish things I very much appreciate like the nostalgia thing that's been going on lately but with them I feel like it's sometimes just too much I just feel it's too cutesy cutesy or it's the opposite side where they're doing like too explicit like pat the puss kind of a highlighter and that's also not appealing to me i just for some reason or maybe for these reasons exactly the aesthetic of the brand has never been it hasn't been for me i just i've tried a couple of things some things i haven't liked some things i have really liked i don't necessarily think that Too faced really has bad quality it just doesn't appeal to me and i also don't think that they're trying to appeal to me they're not trying to appeal to me which is okay not every brand has to be for me but it's definitely one of my least favorite brands because it's one of those like when i go to sephora or anywhere that they're sold i look at the gondola i'm like i'm not even interested in swatching it it just doesn't look like it's for me i will say though some things i have tried lately that have been really really good quality is the Too faced killer liner i have it in this olive green it's called killer camo this is bomb.com and I have heard that my friend Heather Austin also loves this in other colors if you were looking for an eye pencil this is a really really good eye pencil this like khaki green like an olivey warm khaki green it's a really unique color as well it looks so pretty and the born this way multi-use sculpting concealer this was pretty high but I don't think that this this didn't get as much hype as the Tarte Shape Tape. Let's just put it like that. It didn't get as much hype as the Tarte Shape Tape. But personally, I think that this is better. I think that this is way better than the Shape Tape. But I don't know. Maybe it came out at a time where people were still not tired of the Shape Tape. It did get some hype. But honestly, I think that this is a bomb.com concealer. It's a really good concealer. It is... It's creamy without being oily or greasy. It doesn't really crease on me unless I use too much, but use a little. It's very full coverage. It's just a pretty bang for your buck. You get a lot of product in here, and I think that this is a really good product. I didn't buy this initially. I only bought this because I did a video where I was like trying out things that you wanted to try, like trying my subscribers wish list, and a lot of you were mentioning this. So that's why I bought it. And you know what? This is a really good concealer. So I think the Too Faced, it's not necessarily like it is with Makeup Revolution that I've tried so many things I didn't like them. With Too Faced, it's like, I don't even want to try their things. It's just, it's not for me. Let's talk about Tarte. I shouldn't really be including Tarte in here. I brought out this one, which I hate. This. <laughs> I'm making no sense. This is the Tarte, uh, the Ultra Creamy Shape Tape. I hate this concealer. For me, it's awful. I've heard other people love it. For me, it's an absolute no-go. It is cakey and textury and just awful. I hate this concealer with a burning passion. I have tried not too many things from Tarte. I feel like Tarte and Too Faced are the exact same thing. Not the exact same thing, but the exact same reason why I'm not drawn to the brand. And I don't think they're trying to appeal to me. With Tarte, it isn't that they're like too cutesy cutesy. With Tarte, it is so neutral. And also when you go to Tarte's website and you try to go through the things, they have so many, it's just, so spread the different kinds of like collections that they have the amazonian clay and then there's something with rainforest of the sea and then they have some that sugar rush it's just too many different things and when you scroll through their products it doesn't seem like they're the same brand there are too many in sweden you would call it spretit like it's just too many different things and when you look at it all at once it doesn't seem like it belongs to the same brand i don't feel like tarte is streamlined enough for me to know where to start and what to get i don't necessarily think that tarte has bad products even though i will say that the things that i have tried like this concealer or their false lashes i mean i hated those i don't hate the original shape tape i think it is an okay concealer but like i mentioned before i do like this one more the shape tape is really good if you do not have 
when you're younger, if you don't have a lot of fine lines, if you don't need to set your concealer because it's gonna crease into your fine lines or your folds or anything like that. If you have younger or less textured or less like fine lines on your eyes, I do think that the Tarte Shape Tape could be a good concealer for you. Definitely, it's very full coverage, less is more. Um, it sets a bit on itself, which is a good thing because you need to use less powder, although some people use so much and then bake on top of it. My under eyes cannot deal with that. So I don't hate the concealer, but I honestly, in no way, shape or form think it was worth the hype that it got. But it is the best thing I've tried from Tarte, but I haven't tried it because it's the same thing. I go to Sephora, I go to Tarte and I look at it and I'm like, I don't even wanna swatch it. I'm not interested. They're not marketing or making products for me. And it's okay, they don't have to, but I just, Sometimes I look at it, I'm like, should I be interested as a booty guru to be trying out more things? I'm just like, meh. And then I don't know where to start because it looks like it's four different brands within one brand. And I'm just I'm over it before it even began. That's how I feel. Let's talk about the recent brand. A recent brand that I tried. Uh, and I did bring out this one, the Cloud Paint by Glossier. Glossier was one of those brands that for the longest time I was not interested in trying it. At all not even a bit i am not that no makeup makeup model of duty like uh, that kind of a makeup when it's just like a better version of yourself i'm already a really good version of myself i don't need makeup for me to feel complete i don't do my makeup to look pretty i feel pretty enough without makeup like it's okay if i do makeup i want it to be seen i want it to be different i want it to be fun that's how i look at makeup and i don't blame anyone for seeing makeup in a different light. I'm not here to tell you how you should love makeup as long as you're not here to tell me how I should love makeup. I want my makeup to be visible and that is not what Glossier is. And that's the main reason why I didn't try them for such a long time. Then I did get a lot of requests if I could try them, if I could do like a full face of Glossier, just seeing if it's my type of makeup. Because I do like a more light coverage foundation with a more bold eye, which is what I'm wearing today. I'm actually wearing this one, the Light Wonder by Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury was actually one of those brands that for the longest time I was not interested in, but I realized as long as I stepped away from the eyeshadows, it's actually a really, really nice brand. I'm, I'm sure the eyeshadows are great too. They're just not marketed to someone who loves bold, colorful, dramatic eye looks. This is not super colorful, but at least it's pretty bold, and that's just something that I like personally. And when it comes to Glossier, like I tried the concealer, the foundation, the brow products, the lip product, and I tried this cloud paint. And even when I was on the website, I was fine, like, I was determined. I was like, I'm gonna try this brand, I'm gonna do a full face of Glossier, I'm gonna see what I feel about it. And even when I was on the site, I was like, I didn't even know what to buy because none of it was really jumping out to me. And I do like the cloud paints. I think that these are really good. This is a good product, at least the one that I have, the one in, I think it's Dawn. Yeah, Dawn, the orange one. It's a really nice product. Other than that, either I feel like it's mediocre or I can find something better for less money like the brow products or I feel like like the skin tint. It is so light coverage that it's literally no coverage and for I just I don't see the point in wearing that instead of just wearing nothing. And that's just that's just how I feel. If I'm getting that little coverage I might as well just wear nothing because that's just how I feel. So it's just, again, a brand that's not meant for me. It's not made for me. I gave it a try, but I, I don't think, as I'm seeing it right now, that I will be buying any more things from Glossy. It's just, it's not for me. It's okay. It's okay if a brand is not for you. I'm just, I'm just not that interested. Another brand, one of the, in, let me rephrase this. I live in Sweden. In Sweden, we don't have drugstores. Uh, drugstore makeup is available. Uh, you can buy it in some grocery stores and you can also buy it at like Kix. Um, Kix is like our Ulta. It has anything from affordable things like L'Oreal or Maybelline or NYX. It also has up to more bougie things. It has like Dior, Lancome. It also has like Urban Decay and Anastasia. It has a bit of everything. And when it comes to drugstore brands or drugstore makeup in Sweden, it's not that affordable. Like a Milani eyeshadow palette, it could go for $40. So I know people are asking me like, why don't you try more drugstore makeup? Why don't you try more stuff like that? And the reason I'm not buying it, it's because it's 
pretty expensive here. Like an e.l.f. concealer can be like $15. So it, it, it just... It loses a little bit of its glimmer when you have to buy it for mid-range prices. And that is the main reason why I'm not reviewing a lot of um, like drugstore makeup. It's because it's not drugstore priced here in Sweden. Not even, not even a little bit. It's a few brands that are still very affordable here. Essence and Catrice are pretty affordable here. If you want me to try more of them, I could totally do that. Those are like German brands and that's probably why. NYX is pretty affordable here. Not as affordable as in the US, but still way more affordable than Milani, for example. Milani is like like Anastasia prices here. So it, it's, it, it's a little bit wild, but when it comes to like the classic drugstore brands, one of the brands that I have no interest in whatsoever is uh, L'Oreal. Like I look at their things, I try some of their things, I think it's pretty mediocre. I've tried some blushes and some bronzers. I did get some PR from L'Oreal once in a time. It's, it's okay. The eyeshadow palettes are pretty mediocre, like the lipsticks are okay, but you might as well just get something from NYX. The brow products are okay. I will say though, the brow gel from uh, L'Oreal, it's pretty dope as well. But this one, this one is great. Not just good for the money or good for the drugstore. This is a great product. This is the, I think these are called Colorish Shine. Yeah, these are called Colorish Shine. And as you can see, I still have four of them. This is a this is one of the first sheer, shiny, glossy lipsticks that came, and it came to the drugstore. This is in a, like a cool tone taupe. It is not 100% opaque. This one is in hot IRL. They smell like tropical fruits. They look really beautiful and comfortable on the lips. They are like gel-like and glossy and have a little bit of color. You can build them up to have a little bit more color. They are very reminiscent of like the Volupte Shine, Volupte Shine, French. I'm really horrible from YSL or the Fenty Glossy Lipsticks. Uh, very similar to both of those, but for less money and they have a lot of shades. So this is a really good product from L'Oreal and I feel like all the other things I've tried from L'Oreal, some of them have been okay. Some of them have been mediocre, but this one, this one is a really, really good product, but L'Oreal is a counter like I don't even go to that counter. I feel bad saying that, but I'm genuinely not that interested in the makeup. Okay, last brand that I'm going to talk about, and if you think that I miss the brand, if you think that there's a brand that I'm like not liking and um, that I maybe tried stuff from, do let me know in the comments. Maybe I can do part two. And the same with like favorite brands but least favorite product. If you think that I missed the brand, let me know. Maybe I can do a part two. I would love to dive and like dive more into this subject because I feel like it's really interesting this whole discussion of like not everything from a brand can be great and not everything from a brand can be awful. Like it's nuances. But the last brand that I'm going to talk about is Morphe. I'm not uh, I'm not that drawn to Morphe. I think mainly because I feel like Morphe is lazy. I feel like Morphe is just either they are too late on trends or they're just doing something that's worked for them before and they just keep repeating themselves hoping that it's going to be a big hit again. Like they keep doing the almost all brown with a pop of something palettes, just hoping that they're gonna have the same success as they did with the 35.0. But like that's not happening again with the saturation that we have in the makeup market right now. I also think that, I mean, Morphe used to be private label, had nothing against being private label. A lot of companies start like that, I have nothing against that. But then they did do their own formula and their own formula has been a little hit or miss. I've tried some that's been nice and then I've tried some that's been absolutely catastrophically bad. Not even like this isn't the best but like actual like ew, like what happened, like bad. Like if you watch my ranking all the palettes that I tried in 2020, you would have known that at the absolute bottom position was a Morphe palette. So mm, I just, I don't, mm, I feel like what they're coming out with is a bit uninspired and sometimes I hear that they're coming out with really good things and sometimes I hear they come out with really bad things and I am just not intrigued at trying more things from Morphe right now mainly because we've all heard about some of their business practices that have not been the best they do not have the best reputation right now and also I've been burnt a couple of times just not really 
liking the products, not thinking it's worth it. Like I remember when everybody was like all up in arms about Morphe brushes and I was like, these aren't really that good. <laughs> They weren't that good. Don't come for me. They weren't that good, okay? I just, I don't know if I have any Morphe brushes left. Maybe like two or three or something. But I will say, really, really like this bronzer. This is the Brontour. This is a, a shimmery bronzer and a matte bronzer that you can either, it's like a neutral tone one. So you can bron like a mix between bronzer and contour. This is really nice. I almost hit pan on this one. I don't know if you can see the dip in it. Oh, you probably can't, but I've used a lot of this. I also had, I think I decluttered it because I stopped using matte cool tone blushes. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I have so many blushes that I didn't need it. But it was one of those trios, like the blush trios. I'm pretty sure I mentioned both that one and this one as a yearly favorite. I really, really like them. Those are good quality. I also think that they're matte lipstick that I've tried. It's pretty good. I feel like I have that here somewhere. But all in all, I have not been that excited and you know some brands you're like oh I really wish that this brand would come up with something new I really hope they come up with something new Morphe just isn't that brand I don't wish <laughs> I don't wish for new releases from Morphe because I genuinely do not care but maybe things are better maybe they are but what do I know I just it's not one of the brands that I'm like that interested in if I'm gonna be honest but this bronzer this is really good. I mean, it's still in my collection. I still use it. I think it's a really nice bronzer. I don't know if that got any hype at all, but I liked it. I thought it was really good. At least me. I liked it. <laughs> Anyways, let me know. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you have a brand that you genuinely, you're not that interested in, but you have a favorite product from? I would love to know. Or maybe there's a brand that you, you're, you don't, you're not interested in it. You don't purchase from it, but you have something on the wish list that you would like to buy from them. You know, every every now and then, even a bad brand gets it right, right? Or maybe I'm dishing one of your favorite brands in here. And if I am, I'm sorry. This is nothing personal. It's just personal preferences. That's all makeup is, what I like. And it's okay for you to like something else than I like. Anyways, I hope this video wasn't too rambly or too weird. Like I said, I think I forgot how to YouTube. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe though, because I will have a video tomorrow as well. Bye!